Welcome everybody to our second edition of Trek Tuesdays for today. Again, this is our regularly scheduled one because I had to play catch up from last week. And again, apologies for that. Uh, this week we're doing episode, I guess it would be three, but actually two of the actual series considering, like I said, we've done pilots. Again, my name is David from 7poundbag.com. Thank you for hitting the website. Like and subscribe, all that good fun stuff that all y'all know what to do because I'm old and y'all are young, more than likely, so you know what to do. Anyway, so we are talking about uh, the new one. This is Charlie X. Uh, it's kind of odd because they're stopping up to pick up some kid from a freighter to go to another colony. And I thought Star Trek, the original series, was this five-year mission to go explore new worlds. But this is kind of them just running back and forth between, you know, known worlds, I guess. I don't know if I've missed it. Uh, again, we also don't have the the little monologue in the beginning where Kirk talks about what they're doing or anything like that. You know, the star date, etc. Uh, maybe at season two, I don't know if I've missed it or something. But anyway, so they pick up this kid. He's with two uh, people who are more than willing to give him up and get the frick out of Dodge. They could not care less about this kid. They are like Kirk is like, would you like to stay for dinner? Nope, we got stuff to do. Would you like to do this? Nope, we got to go. Uh, okay, and the kid Charlie, he's allegedly seventeen. He looks closer to thirty. Again, welcome to the way things are for some odd reason. But it's kind of odd. Uh, again, we come across the yeoman, uh, Janus Rand. And Charlie instantly falls in love with her, which is kind of annoying, to be quite honest with you. Because this is our second episode in a row where she's kind of, I guess, her sex object, I guess we could say. Uh, apparently supposed to be some kind of hot thing. But, uh, again, it's a bit annoying. What can I say? It's It gets my nerves. Because uh, she's all over this episode. Charlie is infatuated with her. She is She is all over this episode. And again, I've never watched the show, as I have to say every week, just to let y'all know. And I have no clue who this chick is. Maybe uh, it, weird to me. I don't know. Like I said last week, I thought she was, uh, I thought she was going to end up being Mrs. Roddenberry, but apparently she's not. Uh, yeah, because I did actually look it up, just for doing some background a little bit on some of these earlier shows. Uh, but again, she's all over the place. He's infatuated with her. Uh, rest of the cast is kind of bouncing around a little bit. Uh, I didn't mention Ahura last week. She kind of has a, a small pivotal role in it a little bit just to kind of show the shapeshifter moving around. This time she is full force. She is singing a song where she's apparently making up on the spot while Spock is playing some kind of musical Vulcan instrument. He actually grins a bit in this episode if you kind of blink if you miss it. It's kind of goofy because for some reason they've got like colored lights showing up on the wall like it's a really downer nightclub, which I guess is a 60s thing. But it's kind of funny because you're in this room where there's nothing but tables. Everybody's just kind of standing around. There's colored lights shown very low on the walls. And all of a sudden the Vulcan starts playing this music and the ship's communication offer officer pops up and starts singing. And she's singing about different people. Uh, nobody's really paying attention to Charlie, which kind of upsets him, so he makes her lose her voice after she mentions her. And then he starts making card tricks. Now, card tricks is somebody who loves America's Got Talent and watches other shows like that. Yeah, they're kind of interesting, but he's obviously not doing actual magic tricks. Uh, because again, he's, I mean, it's, it's obvious camera tricks, let's be honest with you. But it still amazes everybody, and maybe in the future you have cards that can do that kind of stuff. But it's just kind of, it's kind of funny. Uh, again, he kind of loses attention. And as we move along, he starts getting more and more annoyed with the ship. The ship that dropped him off explodes. And they start figuring out that, oh, maybe Charlie's not like an actual human being. Maybe he's something else. Uh, you know, he's got like psychic powers. Kirk kind of tries to take the boy under his wing a little bit so we get a little more characterization on Kirk and before the overacting begins uh, 
they start going to the gym where people are like exercising, which is kind of funny to watch their little futuristic looking gym. That that's worth the price of admission alone, right there. Just to be quite honest with you. And Kirk is showing him like judo throws, which, as we all know, watching Star Trek, it's death. You know, you you hip toss somebody, they're dead. So I don't quite know how you practice that. Uh, Charlie kind of embarrasses himself and makes a dude just flat out disappear. Uh, Kirk calls in the guards, and Charlie makes their phasers disappear. Not just those, but every phaser on the ship. So we have instantly hit, oh crap zone. Uh, Charlie starts to take over the ship. He wants to go to the colony, even though Kirk's trying to divert him, so he takes over the ship. And it basically comes down to Kirk trying to exert a little bit of control over Charlie, trying to capture him. Charlie's mental powers isn't allowing none of that mess, which is kind of funny when they try to trap him. And eventually we have our MacGuffin, or not our MacGuffin, excuse me, our, shoot, what's the term? Uh, shoot, I can't think of it now. I'm drawing a blank. Uh, mm, my coup de grave, shoot, I'm losing my freaking mind. I can't think of it. Do sex machina. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I couldn't. I had a brain cramp. So the Deus Ex Machina shows up and Charlie's taken away. He's an alien being. Sorry for the slight spoilers, but deal with it. And it's just kind of funny. He is taken off. Have a nice day. Nothing to see here. Moving along. And uh, I'm going to say no to this one. I am not a fan. Uh... Charlie, consider especially considering last week they don't mind killing, uh, especially to protect everybody. If Kirk's going to protect the entire ship, uh, Charlie would have been shot. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's human. Yeah, he's young. Yeah, he's whatever. You start making my crewmen disappear. Yeah, I'm I'm throwing you out an airlock. You have a nice day. It's not happening. Especially on a military vessel, you have killed military personnel. You have made military personnel's faces disappear. Uh, no, sorry, we're not having it. And the the little alien people basically show up and say, "Sorry about that." Next, no, I'm not. I'm not having it. I'm sorry. You're you're a dead man. Charlie ain't lasting on USS David. Just ain't happening. Uh, but again, like I said, as far as our as far as our cast and crew, again, Spock's still relatively minor, which is kind of odd, uh, especially considering he's still Arsenal featuring in the credits. Kirk's first big acting overdoing shows up in full force here, but it's not that bad. Again, the gym scene is, is worth it uh, if you, like, for some reason decide to watch the show. Charlie's not that bad an actor. To be quite honest with you, but again, to me, he looks like he's 30. But it's just, like I said, the sci-fi kind of falls apart. The camera wipes to show off his powers are kind of obvious. Again, it's cheap sci-fi in the 60s, but the plot just doesn't grab me. After a while, you kind of figure out that, yeah, this dude's dangerous. He wiped out one vessel. He's already killed, like, two crew people, I want to say. That he just basically gets rid of. Uh, turns one into an iguana. Uh, yeah, he's a dead man. Sorry. So we are one for three so far in Star Trek. Uh, next week we will hit Star Trek Season 1, Episode 4. Uh, where no one has gone before. Make sure you hit the website. Uh, I do appreciate y'all coming by. Uh, started a new thing on Twitter, as I said last time, where I'm giving out a trivia question of the day. Maybe on Tuesdays, I'll next week, I'll do some Star Trek trivia. To tell you the truth, I don't know that much about the original series. Like I said, I've never watched an episode, but maybe I'll throw something out for Next Generation. Any thoughts or comments, drop them in the comment box below. And I will see y'all next Tuesday for uh, episode 4, and we'll continue our wagon train to the stars. Bye. Easy, silly.